Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And the biggest round of changes we have seen in a long time just hit PvP and completely obliterated any current power rankings that you might be aware of up to this point. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering a tier list of all of these specializations in PvP and trying to predict where they're going to be landing given their current power strength and where it's going to be estimated after being nerfed. I've been looking in at a lot of different opinions from a lot of high-ranking players as well as my own personal experience to try and input the possible best prediction for you moving into Tuesday so you can maybe have a better idea of, of what to expect and where to go. And if you want to stay up to date with information like this in the future, then do to make sure to hit the subscribe button. Your support is greatly appreciated. So let's get started. Blood Death Knight, I'm going to be putting this on D because we've literally never seen it and it got nerfed. So if it had any sort of sneaky shenanigans, it probably doesn't. Uh, Blood Death Knight, we're just getting it out of the way, probably at the bottom. Bottom. Frost Death Knight, it was looking good for you. Death Knights were like bordering immortality, like strongest class in the game. I would have argued maybe Unholy was still edging a bit ahead of Frost, uh, but now your survivability is going to definitely be noticeable. But do note at the same time that the survivability of everybody else has now also gone down. I wouldn't say exactly to the same extreme. Um, so I do think that that puts Death Knight much lower than it was before. I would have probably edging it high A, high uh, going into low S. Now it's probably just going to feel average, possibly below average. Um, I still kind of want to wait and see for this one. I, I think that if you were a Death Knight player, you're going to find a way to make it work. But if you're in the top 0.1%, this is where you're going to start to get some problems given the strengths of other classes. Unholy Death Knight, this is one that I think is better than Frost, um, but still probably going to end up uh, in an average position uh, after all of the changes have gone through. I think that you're going to struggle with classes like Warriors and Hunters and maybe Feral Druids, and I think that those classes are going to be gnarly, Assassination Rogues, this type of deal. I think those classes are going to be really, really strong. So you're probably better than Frost. If you're on the left of this tier, it means you're at the top of this tier of the B. If you're on the right, you're at the bottom of the B tier. So probably just going to be an average experience. Uh, and this is much different uh, than a lot of the other predicted tier lists were at this point. Um, so this is why it's good to keep yourself up to date. Havoc Demon Hunter. This one got hit really hard, both offense, defense, and CC uh, at the same moment. I think in the highest rated games when you got like a lot of rogue play, because Subtlety Rogue has definitely propped up and Assassination Rogue has propped up quite a lot, that Havoc Demon Hunter was actually being run down by those compositions specifically. You're still really well-rounded in solo queue in my mind with lots of crowd control diminishing returns you're still going to have some self-sustain it's like not like it's non-existent your lay on hands heal is now instead of a full heal you know only going to be a half of a heal but it's still a larger heal than a lot of other classes currently have i'm expecting that havoc demon hunter will still be in a good spot just given how strong its kit is how easily it synergizes with a lot of other classes it'll still be strong but if we're talking like arena world championship arena tournaments it's possible that you know it might be ghosted out of that level of competition given how powerful still some specs are vengeance demon hunter this is another one much like blood decay i haven't really been seeing it i think in world pvp and 1v1 these tank specs are probably still the best um but if we're talking like 3v3 solo queue um i'm, I'm expecting these guys to not really perform too well balance druid Honestly, Balance Druid, given all of the changes to the other classes and the reductions in their healing output, has actually been kind of an indirect buff to Boomkin. Things like Boomkin, Ellie, Shaman, and Hunter, classes that didn't really heal a lot to begin with, are actually a lot better off now. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm tempted to put it as a low A or a high B um, somewhere in there. A conservative one would be a high B. Uh, you know, a more liberal one would be a, a low A. Uh, at the moment, I think it's going to be doing a lot better um, if the dot damage that it's doing is able to sink in on classes like Warlocks and Death Knights um, and Shadow Priests, because previously it just wasn't really able to get damage going out onto those classes. Do note that I do think that Preservation Evoker and Mistweaver Monk are like some of the best healers right now, and those do make it difficult for Balanced Druid. So maybe it's probably like a high B better than the Death Knights, but... Um, probably still lower than a lot of other classes and do note that i'm like comparing all the classes against each other normally i'd break this down into melee ranged and healer so you do want to kind of cross compare yourself within your given domain it's really hard to compare a balanced druid to a demon hunter because 
their options are going to be so much different. Feral Druid, I think, is surprisingly going to be on S tier. I think that Feral Druid might be one of the few melee DPS that has the highest amount of healing output still remaining um, of all of them and personal survivability and the damage profile that it has, the fact that it has mortal wounds. I think it's going to synergize with a lot of classes. Feral Druid already has like top tier comps, like the Hunter Feral Druid composition. Um, I'm, I'm expecting Feral Druid to do really well considering it managed to get through all of this without even being scratched. Guardian Druid, this was a big one. Um, I think it already wasn't going to be seen in competitive play um, because you can just ignore it and then deal with it as the last uh, person in the arena match. And also in, in ranked solo queue, if you kill someone else, the game immediately ends and you don't have to deal with the Rage of Sleeper mechanic. But they did nerf it off the face of the earth. I don't think you're going to see it in competitive play. Um, world PvP, I still think it's probably better than all the other tanks, uh, other than Prop Paladin. Um, but in World PvP, it's probably still going to be really disgusting um, with the amount of healing. I think that you'll just never die and that you'll be able to outlast pretty much any other dps in 1v1 so it's probably it's definitely better than the other tanks that i've got so far um and pr maybe still better off um in world pvp resto druid again you're not a preservation evoker but i still think that you are a very strong class um overall maybe close to second or third um best healer in the running at the moment so i'm throwing you up on like a high a kind of closely bordering into s tier but it's really tough to compare healers to preservation evoker devastation evoker i think this class is going to really suffer I, I i've i've played it a lot myself recently and seen the way that it works um, since the changes without being able to completely 100 zero somebody i think that the reverse execute mechanic does not work in pvp you just get somebody low and they're immediately almost back to full health and you run out of damage and steam like you need to hit the gas pedal hard enough that you get somebody down to zero percent um i don't feel like there's a lot of powerful execute classes anymore like if shadow burn hit as hard as it used to in execute range um touch of death might be the only one so maybe wind walker devastation evoker but you get a bunch of damage out, but it's almost immediately recovered, and then you start to stagger off and fall behind, and it looks really rough. And I cannot think of a single synergy with other classes that's like, wow, Devastation is the class that you want to bring. I really think maybe maybe D is, you know, maybe you're not a Blood DK, um, but I, I think it's going to suffer um, given its current kit and the way that uh, PvP is playing out right now. I, th I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle spec. Its survivability is just not there. Um, and then reverse execute just really is not good in PvP. Preservation Evoker, probably the best spec in the game still. Cannot believe that it managed to get through without really getting touched. Um, maybe they just want it to be the best healer for this patch given that it's a new class it's super fun i think everybody that i've seen that's touched it has really been enjoying playing it even myself included so having a patch for preservation evoker you know is outright the best I'm probably gonna get tired of it by the end of the season but i think it should be nice and especially get more people into the healing role um for the first season here beast mastery hunter this class got a lot better with all of the again the defense nerfs of other classes uh i think that it's going to be pumping out monstrous amounts of damage it can keep its ranged distance unlike um the death knight specs i think it's uh, do we want to say it's a high b or high low a it's kind of like boomkin right now to me bm hunter and uh, moonkin either a low a or a high b I think because of its synergies with Feral Druid, it's going to be doing a lot better. If this was a solo queue list, I think it would be lower. So this is like, I'm trying to consider everything in PvP right now, solo queue and ranked threes. I think if this was solo queue, I would switch Boomkin with BM Hunter. But if it's ranked threes, I would switch them. Maybe we just put them both up here. Maybe that would just be a better slot or a better idea. Do I really think they're a Demon Hunter though? Are they really a Demon Hunter? Maybe it's a high B somewhere in here because I, I, I still don't think you're probably on a demon hunter's level survival hunter probably coming closer now uh, i think it's the best solo q pvp spec and you can flex it in in 3v3 as well survival hunter is doing a lot better than i think than it was anticipated it's really underrepresented spec like niche pick hard to get a lot of detail on um, but it's got really good damage really good control again in solo queue environment hunter probably not going to be the best this is going to be the best hunter spec of them all but in ranked threes i think it's going to do really well marksmanship hunter this is a really tough one uh, to rank because I think you do a tremendous amount of damage, but you are really fragile and easy to take down. Similarly, uh, and you don't have the mobility like BM Hunter where you have to, you kind of have to turret and stand still. So I think you are a little bit weaker than BM Hunter. Maybe it would be more wise. F do I really want to put all three of them down here? Um, maybe that's fair. I, again, because I think it makes sense. With the healing reductions coming down, everything's evening out a little bit more. Um, specs are going to be more competitive with each other given different environments. I think this is going to make sense. Uh, for Arcane Mage, 
again the healing reduction on things like warlock really big deal for you death knights demon hunters those classes were going to really make it a nightmare for you as a mage um so to me i think arcane is definitely benefiting it's still going to be a high ranking spec uh probably the best of all of the mage specs fire mage your combustion is no longer going to be purgeable but it's funny enough i actually think fire subtlety rogue might even just might even just come back just because your damage is instant cast as fire comparatively to that of frost of an arcane and the way that you have to set it up um i think that fire it, it could be sleeper like i've been putting it down on the d tier i should have had a tier here for sleeper um i think it's i actually think it's probably better than devastation evoker i think devastation evoker might be the worst spec in the game performance wise or close to the worst spec so i actually think it's probably maybe low b just because it's gonna have rogue mage and solo q it's probably the worst class. Um, to, Mage is just going to really struggle. We saw that in the tournament um, in Shadowlands, and Mage is still in a similar position in terms of performance in that environment, so it's probably not too great there. Frost Mage, you got a couple of builds. I've been seeing Icicle builds uh, with Mastery, Ice Lance, and Glacial Spike, and different little flex builds like that. I don't really think that you're... I don't know. Given all of the nerfs, though, are you going to be able to keep up? You're going to be more of a wizard healer or wizard mage spec compared to fire. Fire's probably only, again, only with rogue. Um, Frost is going to play with only casters, like Demo Warlock, I'm expecting um, that type of deal. So you're pro I want to say you're worse than DK, but better than fire. So somewhere in here, maybe, maybe, maybe better than Frost DK. Somewhere in here, close to here, middle of the pack. Miss Weaver Monk, I think it's a really solid healer. I'm uh, going to have a lot of throughput. And now I've seen a, a couple monks picking up the Fist Weaving um, build since they changed it. So it's possible that Fist Weaving comes back. Brewmaster Monk, again, non existent and not enough information on it to know if it's good. It didn't actually really get any nerfs compared to the other tanks. Um, so if it, there is something sleeping there, it could pop up, but I think it's probably not going to be too great. Uh, Windwalker Monk, I think this class does a tremendous amount of damage, has a decent synergy with a lot of other classes. But the main class that you worked with was, was Death Knight, and Death Knight got hit the hardest. Um, of all the classes. So your synergies there in 3v3 are probably going to be abysmal. I think your survivability is probably better than Hunter, though. Um, so with the mobility that you have, your burst damage is going to be comparable. So probably middle of the pack. Holy Paladin, I've been seeing a lot of melee wings, a lot of indefinite uptime um, with that build on Holy Paladin. Again, I, th I think the healers are really close in comparison, but Preservation Evoker is probably still the best. Um, so it's probably a, a B tier at the moment. Again, compare melee to melee, range to range, and healer to healer. Because if you're trying to say like Holy Paladin's better than Windwalk, or better than Boomkin, or better than, it's like it's just it doesn't not going to make sense. Think of the healers um, as directly competing and melee DPS directly competing in ranged for now. Prop Paladin got big nerfs finally. I think that Prop Paladin was going to be the best spec in the game. I still think it's probably the most competitive tank spec. Now in Solo Q, you get your own ladder against other Prop Paladins, so maybe we don't see it a lot, but I I'm, I do not want to put it low. I think that this thing, even given the nerfs, could still be a really strong spec, really annoying to deal with, especially in like double healer scenarios, right? Things like Warrior Prot Healer. Um, that's constantly been popping up, and I, I don't think it's going to completely disappear. So putting it here on the B tier for now. Uh, now we've got Rhett Paladin. Rhett Paladin, I actually think is surprisingly strong. With the Judgment build that it's got at the moment, you are doing huge amounts of burst damage. And, you know, people were saying Word of Glory healing is low, but I've seen Flash of Light doing a lot of healing. I think you might actually be one of the melee DPS with, like, the most healing now, given all the other nerfs. Discipline Priest, really tough call with this one uh, as to where I want to put it. I want to say that it's probably closer to where uh, Paladin is. Um, comparatively to other healers, I think mana is probably going to be a problem for you. Losing Shadow Mend was still a big deal, so getting interrupted multiple times. Uh, but being able to pump out damage is definitely going to be a benefit. Uh, so we'll kind of wait and see. Disc could be higher than this. Holy Priest, uh, really solid healer. A lot of escape uh, mechanisms in solo queue to avoid cheese mechanics, which is going to be really good. Decent healing output. Uh, probably like. I want to say like low, low A, so like the lowest of the A tier healers at the moment. Still the only healer that brings a ranged stun. Again, it's really tough to compare healers because preservation is just so much more on top of them, but they're really close in the running. Shadow Priest, I think, is still going to be S tier. Um, the crowd control. Siphine nerf was a big deal, but now you can shield the Siphine, so there's going to be other ways to make that more annoying uh, for players, but you still bring mind games and catharsis. I don't know how catharsis did not get nerfed. Shadow Word Death Damage is absolutely crazy. You're going to absolutely pump people. Shadow Priest is a really good class, hybrid multiple stun drs or crowd control drs it's still going to be a phenomenal spec assassination now this is the one that i think is really sleeper i'm really tempted to actually put this on s or very high a tier uh, i think assassination is going to be running people down 
with how much damage it's able to do and having two charges of shiv to apply its mortal wounds that got nerfed by five percent but still having two charges of that no other class can amplify their mortal wounds that rapidly or that frequently um so damage can just be overwhelmed and immediately just crushing people so i'm pretty tempted to put this as a high a bordering s i'll leave it in a for now because i think its survivability is lower than the ones currently in s and that's the main reason um outlaw rogue haven't seen enough of it really tough to say how good or bad it's going to be uh, at the moment some people i've seen like oh my god it's gonna be good but i feel like subtlety and assassination are just absolutely crazy in comparison that it'd be really tough for me to believe that outlaw is gonna be really up there but its survivability is definitely strong subtlety rogue got a big healing nerf got more burst damage nerf um onto it but is it gonna be bad right so in a ranked threes environment things can be really good also do note i've been seeing a lot of people underrating sub rogue in solo queue but we saw a solo queue sub rogue in the tournament even when outlaw was like a hundred times better than every other spec in the game still a subtlety rogue made it into the top four in north america's region so subtlety rogue is not completely written off in solo queue as like well it doesn't work because it needs coordination i think a, a strong salty rogue that knows how to work around blind shadowy duel and smoke bomb can create win conditions completely on their own given their own toolkit so if they know how to follow those lines of cc and execute um given those cooldowns i think that you can make it work i actually want to say that salty rogue is probably still a maybe bordering s when we talk about um 3v3 specifically again maybe the only reason i would say it's lower i think it's easier to play assassination and get kills with it um but given you know if you've got high skill cap on this i think salty rogue is actually gonna be pretty gnarly Ellie Shaman pumping out monstrous amounts of damage. It's really happy that the defense of a lot of other classes has gone down. I want to say it's probably low A, maybe high B, um, somewhere in there, similar to like what a hunter would be, maybe better than a hunter, um, given that I think you can win without crowd control, uh, whereas the hunter, the hunter specs might be more dependent on it. So you're probably a bit better bordering close to A tier, um, similarly to Windwalker Monk. Enhancement Shaman. You got nerfed really hard in this most recent one. It's really tough to say where you're going to end up now. Your synergies were also already the lowest of all the other classes. Your buddy Fury Warrior got hit pretty hard in this most recent one, which is going to give it, you know, probably be one of your 3v3 comp options. Um, I, I, I think it's probably middle of the pack. It's probably coming in close. Um, like you can make it, this is like a tier where it's competitive. You can make it work, but there's something that these specs have that's going to put them a little bit more ahead of you, um, given the current, uh, rankings. Resto Shaman, I think is the worst healer, um, of all the healers. Maybe we should organize this. We'll do it at the end. We'll organize it as melee ranged in healer. Um, so that's a bit easier to read. Um, but restoration shaman, probably the lowest ranking of all the healers. Um, going to be a bit of a struggle. Still going to be a functional healer, but in comparison to everything else, I think it's the lowest ranked. Affliction Warlock. Affliction Warlock does not have the same CC as Demo. It doesn't have mortal wounds, so given some synergies with other classes, you might start to struggle more um, than other Warlock specs. And uh, it's it's really tough with the soul leech changes and everything. Like, what's your survivability going to be like? It is true that at the same time, survivability has gone down for everything else, so it's possible that you end up completely fine. Um, I think I'd previously given this like an S tier ranking, so I probably feel more safe giving it like an A tier ranking um, as opposed to an S. And then for demonology, I think even given the nerfs, that demonology is probably still going to be um, the best bet uh, for warlocks at the moment in competitive PvP, whether it's solo queue or ranked threes, just because of how much control it has to be able to either prevent a game from ending or end a game itself. Destruction warlock, I think, is very similar to devastation right now. If you don't have enough damage to close out a kill on a target, it just completely runs out of steam. So you guys are kind of just in the same boat of like that play style of damage just doesn't really work in PvP. I think you're probably going to have a hard time. Um, and also, I think destruction feels some of the nerfs, right? Correct me wrong if you're a Warlock player, but I'm pretty sure all the, the healing nerfs that all the other specs got, Destro also got. Destro was already kind of at least easier to kill. Um arms warrior where is it going to be it got buff fury got nerfed honestly I think fury and arms just end up in the same kind of bottom position um you could probably make this spec work i think it's better than devastation or destruction for sure it's probably better than um a lot of death knight specs uh for arms warrior i've seen some unhinged burst damage builds so i want to say probably like middle of the pack for arms warrior at the moment fury warrior the slaughterhouse change is really what's on the table for me like are you going to be able to get enough damage out? Is the MS effect going to be falling off all the time and then you don't have enough damage to be able to end the game? Because if you're in that situation, you're you're like, you're going to be one of the worst melee, if not the worst melee. Uh, but if you can maintain the stacks uh, at a decently high margin and get uptime, I think you're still a strong offensive class. Uh, you still have a lot of healing from Battle Trance. I think Bloodthirst is still probably going to heal a lot as well in this position. You'll probably struggle um, with things like Assassination Rogue, Shadow Priest, the way that they can pressure you down, Feral Druids, um, 
you're probably middle of the pack. It's probably still maybe better than arms. So like maybe somewhere here in between the hunters, like it's, it's really tough to, to give this a ranking at the moment. You're, maybe you're still better than an Ellie. I feel like you're probably still better than an Ellie. Middle of the pack, more competitive than before. And then Prot Warrior, you had shield charge damage, you got nerfed, you're probably coming in at the bottom, not really gonna be able to make it work. So I wanted to reorganize this so that like all the melee classes were next to each other. So it would make the most sense. Um, as to like where things are sitting at the moment. So let's just reorganize this for everybody that's wondering like, well, how are the classes currently sitting? Um, so right now we've got the healers here on the left, right? So we'll do healers uh, on the left. Where is it? We'll get this all organized here and then melee and then ranged. So that way it makes the most sense when you guys are looking at this. I don't, I don't think Guardian Druid is... Again, it's uh, if I'm moving this now, it's not that like these healers are better than this or the melee are better than these ranged. It's just directly comparing the ranged with each other um, as opposed to against um, melee classes, which really wouldn't make too much sense, right? We don't want to be comparing melee against ranged like that. Um, I think that that's it, right? We got Preservation, Best Healer, Feral Shadow Demo, uh, Rest of Druid, Second Best, Misfavor, Holy Priest, Acer Rogue, Best Melee, Sub Rogue, probably Second Best Melee, Demon Hunter, Ret, Af, Arcane, uh, Holy Disc, Windwalker, Fury, Survival, Arms, Enhancement. Um, again, in solo queue, I think Survival is probably a lot lower. How did Survival sneak up here, actually? Survival, oh, because I moved it based on Melee. Is Survival better than Arms and Enhance? I would think it's got to be better than arms and enhance right now. But again, in solo queue, I think Hunter will struggle. I think that this makes sense. Uh, I, I think I feel comfortable with this list. Again, it's a prediction list. Um, just to get you an idea of like where I'm thinking the current levels of power are going to be for the classes. We'll update this after it's gone live if we see any changes in the future. So do make sure to hit the subscribe button so you're always up to date. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. And I will catch you in the next one.